Well, hello, friends. Thank you for stopping by. And as the title is suggesting, we're going to be talking a little bit about reaming the cylinders. Um, before I get into this discussion, I hope everybody will take a moment to like and subscribe and to share it with your bestest of buddies. All right. When I took this particular 1858 Navy out to the shooting range the other day, one thing I did not talk about or mention, and it's because I kind of really wanted to see what was going on first. That first cylinder, I, you know, I always shoot a 380 round ball. Now, when I first bought this gun, and taking it out to my shooting range at that time all of the loading that I did was with my press okay and I generally do that with all of my shooting sessions just to save you know the palm and the shorter loading levers you know let me get in the camera here the shorter loading levers and everything else and um, you know with this length here it just makes it a little easier to load the cylinder so I never really encountered any difficulties just simply because I didn't have any with the load with the extra long loading lever so that's a qualifier so the other day when I took this gun out to the shooting range the first round ball I put in the cylinder using the loading lever I had a terrible time getting that round ball to seat into the cylinder but I did get it took a little extra oomph and I put another round ball in it after I you know charged the cylinder with black powder and uh, put my felt wad in there and I immediately had the same issue it's like why is this so hard to load so at that point I just dropped what I was doing and went and got my my loading device took the cylinder off and just continued loading everything at that point and really didn't really didn't think about the difficulty I was having at that time just simply because that extra long lever made putting the round ball into the cylinder a lot easier so with that being said after I got the gun back to the house and thinking about everything and in particular why was I not having any problems loading the same round ball into my Colt replicas including this 1851 Navy and in particular my 62 pocket navy same round ball same batch didn't have any problems loading the guns so I decided to get my micrometers or my dial calipers and do some measuring and I discovered something now I've already done all of this off camera and so I'm just going to go through some numbers that are critical to this discussion. And as it relates to soft lead as opposed to maybe what today is plumber's lead, if you can get it. But what I discovered is, and I'm only going to be talking about the cylinder diameter, where the ball goes in and where you should be cutting a lead ring to ensure you have a proper seal between the ball and your powder charge and there again if you're not shooting a pre-lubricated felt wad that's generally not a concern or an issue so measuring and I'm going to just start with my 62 pocket navy the cylinder as best as I can measure with these dial calipers measured at a 0 0.370 now bear in mind I went ahead and um, and uh, slugged the barrels I got all of those measurements but those measurements 
for the purpose of this video pretty much are irrelevant. But on my 62 Pocket Navy, the cylinder measured at 0 0.370. My 61 Navy, which is the Uberti, measured also at 0 0.370. Now my 51 Navy, which is the Arms Corps, that cylinder I discovered tapered. And it's got a 10 thousandths taper. It goes from 0 0.370 to 0 0.360. Now the Remington, this is the one that I had a problem with, and its cylinder measured at 0.365. So it's actually five thousandths of an inch smaller than the, um, than the Colts, than the Colt reproductions. Now I thought maybe uh, Pieta messed up in boring these until I just happened to be the other day on the channel Old Ranger and he was fitting some conicals into some of his cylinders just doing a vid video talking and showing the difference in some of the conicals and what I picked up right away is the first gun that he measured he measured the cylinder throw and that was on a uh, older Colt reproduction and I don't remember if it was a Pieta or a Remington, but it measured 0.366 or 0.364. So for that measurement, it's not, apparently not that unusual. So since I am actually shooting a 0.380 round ball, well, in order to fit this round ball into the cylinder, I'm obviously shaving 15 thousandths of an inch off of the, uh, off of the lead. Now, that does sound like a lot, and it really is, with another exception. And this is where it's going to get a little technical and a little more lengthy in this discussion. Just simply because, over the years, being a trader, I have done quite a bit of trading for lead. Uh, bulk lead and I'm going to put some of these things right here and discuss them as I go along and over the years as I trade for the lead I'm always guaranteed yep this is soft lead it's soft lead and um, come to find out it's not always soft lead and when it comes to shooting revolvers and because you have to cut that ring away from the round ball, it's always best to make sure it's pure, soft lead. Now, over the years at rendezvous, I've always just done what a lot of people have done, taking your thumbnail and just kind of gouge the lead to see just how soft it is or if you can gouge it or not. And that's always been good enough. With the exception of this particular shooting day and with this particular revolver. So what I did after I shot that first cylinder, I walked back to my storage shed where I have an ample supply of uh, round ball. I got another batch of round ball that I knew came from pure soft lead. And once again, it's .380. And at that point, I really didn't have as much of a problem loading it into the gun. Although, I, I, I tried the softer lead, and it was a little, little easier, but it was still a little problematic, just simply because shaving off that 15 thousandths of an inch ring of lead. So, what I've done, and I'm going to be doing another video on it, is I've gone ahead and I've ordered a 3.8 reamer. And on all of my 36 caliber revolvers, I'm going to go ahead and ream all of the cylinder throats. And as I've mentioned in the previous video, let me get the revolver here where I've shot this Arms Corps 
61 Navy after I put a new front sight on it and opened up the V-notch, I mentioned that these cylinder throats were already reamed to 380. So I'm going to set a 380 round ball on there and hopefully you can see at this point how deep that round ball is setting into that cylinder. Now I know this is kind of difficult but if you can look at that round ball it's actually gone past the center point of the round ball itself and that's why the harder lead round balls and I'm going to mention that out and show you friends what I discovered here the harder lead round balls I had no problem seeding these or swaging these because it's already gone past that center point so I'm not shaving off any lead and that's why another reason why I always recommend I know there's you know different um, thought points or different opinions out there um, but that's why I always always use a felt a pre-lubricated felt wad just to help ensure there's no chain fire so I hope you guys can get a good look at how much or how you know where that round ball is setting because this cylinder throat is actually reamed to a point three eight oh or which is three eights so I'm gonna get things moved around here a little bit and I'm gonna show the difference um, on my 58 Remington Navy all right hopefully you guys can see with your eye the difference of where this point three eight oh round ball is sitting on this 58 Remington Navy cylinder. It's quite a bit of difference between having your cylinder reamed out at .380 or 3 8 of an inch as opposed to what this one is. And you can see why there was a little bit of difficulty loading this round ball. It does set much higher on the throat of that cylinder. Now I'm going to do the same thing. This is my Uberti. 61 Navy and as you can see the ball does set a little higher than as opposed to that other 61 Navy where the throat of the cylinder has been reamed out. Now having shown that I want to talk just a little bit about the lead. Soft lead versus hard lead and where the real difference might be and with that being stated because I've been doing muzzle loading for decades it's a well-known foregone conclusion that when it comes to your long guns and round ball you can get away with casting and shooting a little bit of harder lead than pure soft lead when it comes to round ball and that's generally because for instance on a 50 caliber rifle your round ball is either going to be a .490 which is ten thousandths of an inch smaller than the bore and that's why we use patches and there again you'll have to decide for yourself what patch thickness shoots better out of your long gun and a couple of years back Mike Nesbitt who writes for a muzzleloader magazine did a really good article on using uh, tire wheel weights for lead and the article very plainly points out don't do that in your revolvers because you have to shave the lead if you don't ream the cylinder so that's not really comparing apples to apples and I, I get that um, but for me um, even in my long guns I've always shot plumber's lead and I don't know whether recently plumber's lead has done something to change you know what plumber's lead really is just simply because years ago I could go to the hardware store and buy 10 pounds of plumber's lead, cast my round ball, and they would fit just fine into my revolvers and my long guns also. The only time that I really 
would ever use soft lead um, in any type of bullet besides a round ball would be like a Thompson Maxi Ball or the Lee Real bullet with rifling engaged at loading. Well, the Thompson Maxi Ball does the same thing. And because this Maxi Ball is the same size as your bore, you would want to use pure soft lead because you will have a little difficulty in loading it. Now, I know there's a lot of words and maybe for some a lot of nonsense, but the point that I'm getting at is that today you have a good means of being able to determine what the tin content is in your lead. And sharing some information that I learned on YouTube just simply because I've come to recognize over the years I've gotten or I've traded for some lead that I was told was pure soft lead and it had some tin in it. But there again, casting round ball and shooting it down a rifle, it's not an issue because the round ball is smaller than the rifling on your long guns. But if you are facing an issue when it comes to revolvers, you can go on YouTube and there's a product that some people are using to figure out what the tin content is in their lead. Now, these are Stettler pencils. Now, I made a mistake when I went on YouTube. Oh, let, me, uh, yeah, let me go back a little bit and just kind of explain how I came across this. Because I have some lead that's got tin in it, um, I wanted to find out if there was a way to remove the tin out of, say, like lead range or, um, uh, yeah, excuse me, range lead. Let me reverse those words and get it correct because range lead is actually a much harder lead. And that's perfect for casting like maybe a 9mm 380 or even some of your conventional rifle bullets. I, um, I have a Rossi M or a Rossi R92 44 Magnum and I cast all of my um, bullets with range lead. But anyhow, not having found any good means of removing tin out of lead and getting it back to the pure soft lead, I came across a YouTube channel that was using these Stettler pencils to determine just how hard your lead really is. So I would just like to demonstrate that because it's not that difficult. Um, the thing that you might find difficult is finding these Stedler pencils. If you go to Amazon, you can find them, but stick with the Stedler brand, and I'll tell you why. Because originally I went to my Hobby Lobby store and I found these. They weren't not they were not in the drawing section of where you would think you'd find these. These are actually in the um, the drafting section um, because these Stettler pencils they're actually hardened lead. And when I went to Hobby Lobby, these were like 35 bucks. And I said, no way, <laughs> there's no way I'm spending 35 bucks on some stinking pencils. So I went to the drawing section and I found a similar brand. And it had all of these different pencils with the different, um, I don't want to say hardness because when I purchased them for like 11 bucks, I took them home. And I was disappointed because they were not hardened lead. So if you're going to go this route, make sure that it specifically says hardened lead. And there's a reason for that. Now when you get these and open them up, there's a huge selection of pencils. And at the top of the pencils, they're numbered. There's a 6B, 5B, 2B, 4B right on down the line. Now, how do you know what pencil is going to be good for determining what your tin content might be in your lead? Well, you can go online and you can actually type Stedler pencils for lead or something to that effect and you'll find 
where people have already put, you know, their, their, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Their, their hardness and how to determine whether you've got pure lead or soft lead based on how hard the lead is in the pencils. So, when I got these, I got home, and um, you're, you're talking about lead hardness, and I forget what the BHN is supposed to mean, what, what the B and the H stands for, but it's to determine how hard your lead is. Now, the 6B pencil is the pencil you would use to find what is soft lead, and on this BHN scale, you're looking at a 4 or a 5 as far as hardness is concerned. So, right here, I have some lead that I've already marked soft because I've been casting some round ball with these. But you take this number 6 pen pencil, put a good sharp point on it, and you can actually gouge the lead. And then you can see how soft it is whereas and hopefully you guys can kind of see that I'm actually gouging it and it's actually gouging the lead if I take number four range lead all the pencil does is just glide across the top of it it's not gouging the lead at all so that should tell you that this is way too hard now when it gets to um, a number seven eight hardness lead which is, which used to be, years ago, plumber's lead. And plumber's lead was pure soft lead, but from what I'm gathering and some research that I've been doing, today's plumber's lead actually has tin in it. And the ratio to lead to tin is 40 to 1. So every 40 pounds of lead, there's one pound of tin. Now, my number 6B pencil, which is a 4-5, just glides. It, it does gouge a little bit, but it tends to glide more than it actually gouges. So let me swap out pencils, and I'll get a 5B, which is supposed to determine um, the hardness at 7-8. get in the camera here and I don't know if you friends will be able to see it but I can take that and I'm actually gouging the lead okay so the hardness of this lead and like it once again I, I don't recall what the BHN is supposed to Bernelli's hardness scale or what, whatever it is so this particular lead right here is a 40 to 1 today what they call plumber's lead and just to reiterate it's 40 pounds of lead um, to one pound of tin so this does have tin in it now is it is it too hard for your revolvers well <laughs> I had a batch of these round balls and what I did is I put them on my sander and I sanded a flat point on them or a, a flat spot and what I determined is this is plumbers lead by today's standards which has got a little bit of tin in it now I had no problem loading these in my Colt revolvers my Colt replicas because the throat of the cylinder was 0.370 and I'm only shaving off ten thousandths of the lead of, of, of a ring of lead but in my Remington it was 0.365 and that's why I had a little bit of difficulty with it and one of the things that I should mention is the other day when I was shooting my 61 Navy that I put a new front sight on that had been reamed out with a 3 8 reamer and I had no problems loading that round ball that had some tin in it so it does make a little bit of a difference um, going down the barrel is a little bit of tin in these lead ball gonna make that much of a difference well you guys saw how that gun shot you guys sat and watched 
how that gun shot with that new front sight and opening up that rear sight most of those round balls stayed right within a very respectable group um, so anyhow I'm in the process of getting um, a 3 8 reamer on the way and I'm going to ream these throats because I prefer to shoot a 3 8 excuse me a .380 round ball just simply because as it swages down the barrel it's going to lengthen the grooves the land of grooves and it's going to increase the amount of lead that contacts your rifling which is supposed to help in accuracy so I want to carry on just a little bit more with these lead pencils now if you have a good number two lead pencil number two lead pencil is what you would use to determine range lead or softer obviously you wouldn't want to use this um, on range lead and then turn around and make round ball for your revolvers because that would be way too hard but I have some lead here that I've got marked number four range lead and I think it's the Benelli hardness scale if I remember correctly but a number two lead pencil with range lead will actually gouge it and you hopefully you can see that gouge right here so a number two lead pencil would be good for that and here again the hardness of your lead will help in reducing leading um, I've got all of this written out right here for just my own personal use and what each one of these hardness scale is gonna represent like if I were to use a number 3B pencil okay the 3B pencil I, I accidentally grabbed number 2 but the number 2 pencil there again would be your range lead and once again you can see that pencil gouging the lead now anything softer obviously the number two pencil is going to gouge it but you wouldn't want to use a number two pencil to determine if your lead soft enough in your revolvers you'd want definitely to get the right thing the right um, hardness but like a number three B pencil would represent um, a 20 to 1 lead to tin ratio so for every 20 pounds of lead you've got one pound of tin which would actually make your lead harder so anyhow um, I think that's all I really want to say about this at this time for my own personal use my own personal information um, once I ream the cylinder throats to three eighths of an inch which will accept a .380 round ball it'll swage into the cylinder just fine as I showed with that um, other with the uh, 61 Navy that I replaced the front sight and open up the rear V groove on the uh, hammer so anyhow friends thanks for indulging me I hope you can take something away that's useful from this video and uh, once again just to reiterate if you're interesting interested in knowing for sure the hardness of your your lead I would recommend investing in a set of these Stettler pencils and um, I bought mine on Amazon like I said for about like 11 bucks 12 bucks and I think it was free shipping um, and I have found these to be very useful because since I have received these I've gone through all of my lead and some of it I've had to remelt and I've tested it all and now as you can see like even right here I've taken a sharpie and I've written on top of the lead what it is as far as being soft or even number four range lead or using the 5b and putting the uh, 40 to 1 ratio on top of the the lead that way they're 
I know exactly what I'm dealing with now. And it, it did take some time to go back and remelt all that lead and just kind of figure out exactly what I've got. And, and I do. I've got ample supply of soft lead. And I have even more of an ample supply of the uh, 40 to 1. I've got enough range lead that's going to last me for whatever shooting I'm going to do. But just to reiterate, please, I just want to reiterate. If you're casting round balls for a long gun, say a 50 caliber 54, there's, no, there's not going to be any issues using a little harder lead. It's just not going to be because your round ball is already 10,000 smaller than your bore size unless you're shooting a .495 round ball in a 50 caliber gun. But you're still 5 thousandths of an inch smaller than your bore diameter should not should not be a problem at all and over the years I've had no problem doing that shooting a little harder round ball in fact you know to have a true confession here um, two decades ago I was actually casting range lead into my into the round balls and shooting it down my Thompson Hawking gun I, I had without any problems but there again I would not do that with a maxi ball because in a maxi ball like the real bullet you're engaging the rifling as you load the gun as most of you already know so anyhow friends thanks for indulging me when I get the reamer I will be recording um, me doing that so you guys can kind of get a feel um, where this is gonna go and obviously I'm gonna be doing some shooting with it after the fact and, you know, from my own knowledge, um, I think it's going to help improve the accuracy uh, just because you have a much tighter, better contact, longer rifling um, in these bullets. And if you guys just go back um, to uh, Old Ranger's channel, he did a video um, regarding um, fitting conicals into his revolvers. And you'll, you'll see that not every one of these cylinders are drilled to the same size. So anyhow, once again, thanks for uh, stopping by the channel. And I hope that you will give it a thumbs up and a like. And if you're still looking for a source of um, pre-lubricated felt wads, please visit my Etsy store, Lame Beaver Trading Company. And from time to time, I do put those up on eBay. So thanks for watching, and I hope everybody will have a blessed day. And uh, we'll catch you the next time around. Bye.